Happy Wednesday. It is Kelsey from Shipwreck Beads, and we're here today to we're gonna make some sparkly crystal earrings. This was a request from one of our viewers, Cami Richardson. She sent me a message and, and sent me some pictures of some designs she's been trying to tackle and hasn't been able to. Um, so I thought we'd give that a try today. Um, I also wanted to show you a little bit about what I worked on on Twitch yesterday. Um, if you don't know about Twitch, it's a live streaming, broadcasting um, website where um, I, I uh, do two videos a week on Tuesdays and Thursdays. And yesterday I made a really fun crystal tassel necklace. Um, so we're actually going to do two pairs of earrings today, I think. We're going to finish up one of the tassel earrings that I made yesterday, and then we're going to make a new pair of earrings. So, um, hi Pam, hi Valerie, thanks for joining us today. Yeah, it's still morning here, it's only 10.30, so um, it is a beautiful day. I know you can't really see out the window behind me, but it is sunshine, blue skies, absolutely gorgeous. Um, yesterday the weather was kind of crappy, so it's nice to have the sunshine back. Um, I know it's pretty atypical for our parts of the part of the country to have this kind of weather this time of year, but you know what, I will take it. So um, so yeah, I just wanna show you the necklace that I made yesterday, because I'm really excited about it. So I was at Target picking up some new headphones and I got distracted by their jewelry counter because of course it's right in the front of the store, you know, and, and it was sparkly and awesome. And so I saw a necklace similar to this. It wasn't the same colors or anything like that, but it was a long, tassel lariat style necklace so it's just one long strand of beads Let's see. Let's stand up so you can see so yeah it's just one long really long strand of beads and uh i really like this style because you can wear it in a lot of ways so one of my favorite ways to wear it is just to kind of loop it through and wear it long and you can also get creative with sort of how you twist it a little bit you can wear it wrapped around and do like a choker style, which again is really pretty to do. And so I'll put a picture and uh, the supply list for this up so you can see it. Um, but it's three strands of the Chinese crystal and then some chain tassels. So this is the same chain that we've used in the last couple videos. We used this for our gemstone necklaces last week, last Wednesday. Um, so what I'm trying to do with these videos coming up is kind of trying to use all the same materials um, just to show you how you can get the most out of your um, out of your materials because you can you generally make more than one piece of jewelry out of you know when you buy for a certain project you'll have some left over so it's always good to have some ideas of what you can do with what's already on your beading table so I thought today because um, tassels especially chain tassels are super popular that we'd make a chain tassel just like this so I made half of an earring and then we'll make the other half and then we'll make a different style earring that was requested by Cami Richardson who um, has been trying to tackle a design and hasn't quite figured out mastered how to do it so we're gonna work on that today too so we go ahead and get started we've got a lot to do and um, I hope you enjoy today's video All right, so I did clean off my bead mat a little bit from the last time you guys saw me. <laughs> it was a little crazy last week. Um, so what I've got here, these are a end cap that's an eight by 8.5 millimeter. So it's just a pretty basic cap. You can get, we do sell different styles, so like this cap here has more of like a filigree design. Tierra Cast makes some really great ones, um, but I wanted something just really basic for this tassel that we'll make. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut five pieces of chain at about two and a half inches each. Um, now because they're earrings, I'm going to go back and I'm going to trim it after the fact before I add the beads on the second one just to make sure all my chains... Um, match because there is a little bit of variation in the size. You can make all of your ends equal, but I kind of like them to have a little difference in length like this one here because it allows your beads to hang at different points and it just kind of creates, I just like, I think it creates more interest and it makes for a more eye-catching design. 
So this chain is a um, diamond cut Rolo chain. And I like the diamond cut because it has sort of an angled edge and it gives it a little bit more sparkle. Um, unfortunately, this is not a solder, or this is a solder chain. So that means you're going to have to cut your chain and you're going to lose a link every time you cut a section off. Some chains are going to not be soldered, so you're going to be able to open them like a jump ring. Oh, <laughs> that's all right, Ginger. You didn't miss much. So we're starting. We're going to make a tassel earring. And so right now all I'm doing is cutting five pieces of chain at about two and a half inches each. So these are going to be a little bit longer style earring. Um, but again, you can always adjust that for your personal preference. And so the beads I'm using today are going to be these really pretty um, Chinese crystal that they've got like a green AB finish on them. You can see here's the smaller size that I'm going to use on the ear, um, this first tassel, and then also the larger, a little bit larger size. So they've got sort of a green, purplish gold finish to them. And since the beads themselves are clear, you can see the um, iris finish on the outside of the bead, but you can also see it through and you get this really pretty fire. Um, so they're just a really nice bead and they look just as good with silver as they do with gold. I just really, gold is so popular right now. Oh, thank you, Tara. So I'm gonna cut off a chunk of this wire. You only need a couple, maybe an inch or two but I don't like to work on the spool. I know some people will, but that's just not what I, I'm not coordinated enough for that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start, now this is a 20 gauge wire. I'm gonna start by making, those are not the right wires. There we go. I'm gonna start by making a wrapped loop, but I'm not going to finish it. I'm just gonna make my loop and leave it open just like that. And now I'm gonna thread on my pieces of chain. so that they sit inside the loop there. Okay, so I've got all my chain grouped there and now I'm gonna finish up my wrapped loop and you don't need, you just want to make like one pat, one twist. You don't need to do much more than that because you're not going to see it. Now I'm going to trim that off and I'm going to thread on my cap. And so that's going to sit right over there. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to... Stack some of these crystal beads on top of my bead cap, just like on this one here. And then I also have a little spacer bead on the top of that as well. I've got my beads stacked up and you want to make sure your wire is straight, that you don't have any bends in that because you want your tassel to stand up straight. And now I'm going to finish that with another wrapped loop. So to do the wrapped loop, you're going to grasp the wire right at the top of the bead, create a 90 degree bend, rotate your pliers up, and then bring that end around. And you're going to remove your pliers from the loop and grip the loop like right at the top of that bend there and then you're gonna wrap that around. And this time I'm not gonna do a very messy loop. I'm just gonna keep it nice and clean looking and then trim it off. So now you've got your top of your tassels. Okay, so I'm gonna make sure and press my little end in so that's not poking out at all. And so now I'm gonna even these up and make sure all of my 
chains are even because you can see they're not quite all the same length. So I want to make sure that they're all the same. It's going to be a little challenging to do. It's easiest if you measure before you attach them. Hi, Cami. I'm going to be doing a the earring design that you'd sent me on Facebook. I'm going to be tackling that later after we finish up this tassel earring here. So make sure you stay tuned and watch. But right now I'm just going to finish up and make sure my tassel has even number of, or has even lengths of chain here because I wasn't too precise when I, um, when I cut them initially. You can see this is not really the most precise way to do it. Probably just want to uh, measure them ahead of time. But you know me, I don't do that. All right, so I've got my tassel made there and now I'm going to make my little beaded dangles. And so I've got five pieces of chain, so I'm going to do five little dangles here. But this is a real fun design just to play around with. Tassels, again, are so, so versatile. Um, they can be used on necklaces, earrings. You can make shorter ones for little baubles on bracelets. Um, once you master the technique, it's really easy to apply it to a lot of other styles. So I'm going to do wrap loops on each of these little beads. And I'm going to wrap them directly to my chain. Now you can make your little beaded dangles and then attach them with jump rings too if you'd prefer to do it that way. And sometimes it's nice to have that extra movement that the jump rings will allow for, but I think but for this design I just want to put the crystals directly onto my chain here. So this time I'm, I'm doing just kind of a messy loop on this. Oh, thank you, Cindy. The Chinese crystals are really um, affordable option if you want to use crystals, but, oh, we love you too, Rachel. Rachel's one of my coworkers, and she actually got in a car accident yesterday, and so she is at home on the mend, and we miss her. I especially miss her because I have to go fill in for, shipping, for her in shipping when she's not here, but we just want you to get better, Rachel. We do. But anyways, what I was saying is the uh, Chinese crystals are really affordable option. Um, if you want to have that sparkle and bling in your designs but can't afford some of the more name brand exclusive crystal options out there, um, the Chinese crystal is a really great option for you. Um, it's super sparkly. You're going to get some great colors. And they are around like 4 or $5 a strand. So... Um, super affordable. The necklace that I showed you in the very beginning can be made for under $40 and you'll still have some beads left. So that, so that is really great. I love projects that you can, uh, yeah, let me finish this up or let me, so, okay. So to do my wrap loop, I'm going to grab here, do my 90 degree bend, then I'm going to wrap around just like that. And I'm going to thread on my 
chain onto my wire like so. And then I'm going to wrap around like that. So then we've got our little tassel finished. So it's super quick, especially with the chain tassels. When you're stacking them on the wire, it just comes together really fast. So again, this piece can be used as a um, focal on a necklace. You can use it for earrings. That's what we're going to do today. So I've got some just little dainty shepherd's hook earrings. They look like and uh, you're just gonna put that on just like that and then oop, take your pliers and pinch that shut so that your your piece doesn't come off so if you're using these types of earring wires always 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 use a plastic earring back because these ones are notorious for um, coming out of your ear while you're wearing them. All right, so now I've got a super pretty long pair of shoulder duster tassel earrings. They're a little on the heavier side because you do have all that chain, but you can always use a smaller chain if you prefer, but they're so pretty. All right, so now we're gonna go ahead and do another necklace or earring style um, that, again, Cami Richardson had suggested because she has been trying to tackle it and hasn't quite mastered it yet. So we're gonna use the same chain and these ones are not gonna be quite as long. So I'm only gonna do about an inch and a half or so. And these, I do want this chain to be Yeah, the fish hook has a spring in it. So let me see if I have. I don't have any sitting here, but a fish hook has a spring. And then this one, the shepherd's hook has the uh, the open loop. And it's it looks like a, you know, what a shepherd would shepherd would hold. But yeah, the earring hook, the fish hooks. Let me see what I'm wearing. Yeah, I don't have any on my desk right now, but they're the ones that have the spring near the loop and these ones are more of an open loop but I really like these ones because I think that they're just really small and dainty and they don't add a whole lot to the design so now I'm going to make sure that my chains are even so and what I like to do to make sure that they're hanging the same length is I'll thread them onto a piece of wire because sometimes when they're laying down it's hard to tell if they're even or not so you can see these aren't even so I'm gonna have to trim them up so I like to you know stack if I'm trying to make my chains even I'll stack them up on a piece of wire and then you can see where they're hanging and you can see that they're not quite even but it can sometimes be hard to see that when you're just trying to measure them out I mean what especially on earrings one link one links difference can make a big difference in the uh, the look of your finished piece. So these are going to be the basic earring design here. And I'm going to attach the charm to the chain with a jump ring. So remember, anytime you're opening and closing a jump ring, and counting links. You know, it. I I'm too lazy to actually count links, which is you know what do they say? Um, laziness is the mother of invention. It's the truth. But yeah, I'll just stack them all up on a piece of wire, make sure my wire's straight, and then just kind of trim. And then you don't have to take that time to count. So I'm gonna put my. charm on the end of this chain here. Make sure my jump ring's completely shut.
And these are cute little Celtic heart charms from Tierra Cast. But yeah, I mean, you can always count your links out as well, but I, I don't have time for that. All right, so I've got my, all my chain there. And now what I'm gonna do is for this project, I'm not going to do wrap loops because I just want it to go a little bit quicker. Um, if I wasn't doing this on video and had more time to spend, I would probably do wrap loops for each of these uh, little beaded dangles. But for this one, I'm just going to use my looper tool so that you guys can see that. If you're making a lot of pairs of earrings, the looper tool is something that's gonna come in really handy. It's such a great addition to your, your toolbox. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pre-stack all of my beads onto head pins. So I think I'm gonna use two big ones and then four of the smaller ones for each earring. But I might end up adding more after we finish depending on how it looks. So I've got all my beads pre-stacked onto the head pins, and now I'm going to use the looper tools to, tool to make my loops. So to use the looper tool, you're going to feed the head pin into the tool, so through the teeth there and out the hole on the back side, and then you're going to squeeze. Now because I'm using crystal, I want to make sure not get super close to the, the tooth part here, because if you get too close, you can crack your crystal, and that's no good. So then you're going to squeeze and then you've got a perfect loop, just like that, so fast. So this is a great investment. I think it runs about $30, um, but it's a great investment if you're gonna be making a lot. Yeah, best $30 you will ever spend, I guarantee. I do, a, I mean, I've done a lot of beading. I, somebody asked me today how many pieces of jewelry they thought I've made this year, and I mean, it's probably in the hundreds, and I've always been of the idea, like, I don't need a special tool to make a loop, but when this thing came on the market, it's a game changer, I swear. Like, I'm not just saying that to sell you tools. I really want you guys to have the best and know my true opinion on these, and I love this looper tool. It's so easy to use. My 10-year-old daughter can use it um, and make some really fabulous earrings. They had, like, a fourth-grade marketplace last year, and that's what she sold for her little... Um, her little marketplace store is earrings that she made all by herself with the looper. Yeah, the, it's a fantastic tool, Vicki. You definitely need to get your hands on one. Put it on your Christmas list or buy it for yourself so you can make Christmas presents, um, whatever need you need to do. Um, the looper tool does come in three different sizes. Um, so this is the 1.5 millimeter size. It's referring to the size of the loop that it makes. It is a smaller loop. Um, so for some of the bigger commercial findings, you, you might want to upgrade to the larger size looper. So there's also one that's got a 2 millimeter and a 2.5 millimeter loop, or maybe it's a 3 millimeter loop. Either way, it's a great tool to have. I mean, you can make loops by hand, and it's a great technique, and you definitely, that's something you need to know how to do. But look at how quick I can make all these loops in. Oh, thank you, Cammie. So it will leave a little bit of an opening in your, uh, um, you can either toss them or if they're long enough, I'll actually use them as eye pins, Margaret. 
But I mean, I, I don't know about you, but I don't really save a lot of those scraps. If they're long enough, I'll save them and reuse them and turn them into eye pins and stuff. But yeah. So now what I'm going to do, I'm actually going to attach these to my um, little chain dangles with um, jump rings. So I'm going to go ahead and close up all my loops because you can see it does leave a little bit of a gap there in the wire, which is okay because usually you're going to, I believe it is, Ginger, because I think everything on our website's on sale right now. Here, let me take a look. They are on sale right now, Ginger. They're 20% off. So now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go through and I'm going to squeeze these loops shut. And you can just search on our website um, for looper tool or one-step looper. And it'll come up for you. Sometimes they like to turn. and So what you kind of want to do, because if you're trying to... Oh, it's the last day of the sale. Thank you, Beth. Yeah, so if you want to get so your hands on some a looper at 20% off, you better hop on our website and buy it today. Um, all right, so you want to kind of press down on the bottom of the head pin to keep it from turning on you. We're just going to shut that up here. But you can always connect these directly to your chain, but I want to have it have a little bit more movement. That's kind of what I was talking about when we were making the tassels, how sometimes you want to have that extra link in there. You want to have that extra um, movement that the jump ring will allow for. Yeah, just about everything on our website's on sale right now. So everything that I'm using today is on sale. Um, it's a good deal to get your hands on, especially getting geared up to... Hey, Simone, welcome. You're right here at the end, but you made it. And we're happy to have you. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to start clustering. I'm actually going to add my ear wire first just because I feel like it. <laughs> So you could actually just leave these like this on the chain and have a, a pretty nice pair of earrings, but we're going to kick it up a notch and add some extra bling to it. All right. So what we're going to do is I'm going to use jump rings to connect my little crystal pieces that I just made. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to, this is where I, I am going to have to count the links on this one. And so I want to use, so you can see how the Rolo chain has one that hangs forward and one that hangs sideways. I want to hang my beaded dangles to the one that's hanging forward first. And I'm going to use one of the bigger four by eight pieces. I hung it on the wrong one, even after all that. Now where's the opening on the jump ring? It's actually a good thing when you can't find the opening on your jump ring because that means you've closed it all the way and it's not going to go anywhere. Ooh. And then you drop it. 
story of my life. All right. You know, you can use any kind of chain. Um, you can actually, you don't even necessarily need to use chain, Cami. You could just layer up a bunch of jump rings. But whenever you have your chain, you're always going to have them that one's going to link sideways and one's going to be forward. And so you sort of have to pay attention to where your links are going to lay when you start to connect your pieces together because that's going to affect how your things cluster together. And also adding X, yeah, Rolo Chain is really versatile. And this stuff that's got the diamond cut is just a little bit more sparkly, a little bit fancier than your um, standard Rolo Chain. So when you want a little extra sparkle, like in these earrings, But yeah, certain chains, um, like curb chains, are not always ideal to use for earrings because the way the chain twists can cut. Like if you're trying to dangle things off of them, they might not lay quite right.